and yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, there's just two coaches sitting ahead of her, and uh, the great Carol Hutchins and Mike Candrea. Who was also pretty good at, the, at Arizona. Both of them, we hope, enjoying their retirement or semi-retirements. As Ella Parker starts things off, Parker, one of the freshmen for this squad. She had the RBI double yesterday that went along with Tiare Jennings' home run. Just the two hits that they were able to muster against Sarah Willis, who gets the start in left field today for UCF. To be able to throw that change of speed is such an important pitch, knowing that Hitting is all about timing. So if you can disrupt the timing of a hitter, you, you're going to get those miss hits. And that's the name of the game when you face a team like Oklahoma to be able to disrupt that timing so they don't square you up. It's a terrifying lineup as that goes foul. But Oklahoma, they have had the audacity to lose four games this year. They've lost to Louisiana early on, twice to Texas, as we mentioned, and then Brigham Young, BYU got him. They did, and that was the first loss at the new stadium in Oklahoma. So I know that those losses have stung this year as the whole country expects them to win every single game when they take the field. Only lost one game all of last year on their way to a national championship, and Parker says, I got hit by a pitch. Home plate umpire Steve Gold agrees. And it just grazes that back forearm but no matter how much of you it gets, it is the free pass and gives Oklahoma the advantage early. That is the fourth time that Parker's been hit by a pitch, and here she is, Tiare Jennings, who has been terrific ever since she came to Norman, fouls that first pitch back. And there's been so much pressure on Tiare Jennings throughout her career. Her freshman year was one that was like video game numbers. She's set the record for RBI production at the Women's College World Series with 29 that first season. And as she sits in the box now in her senior year, she's had some more difficult moments. The pressure built, and it comes to a point where you feel like you have to, the weight of the world on your shoulders as you see these records sitting in front of you. And more often than not, you start to press in the box. And we have not been seeing the same kind of production that we're used to out of Jennings, but it's still off the charts good. She's hitting 393, struggling so far in this series. That home run she hit yesterday, which was, by the way, a, a pitch that had been miscommunicated and not meant to thrown to Jennings. That home run she had yesterday, her only hit of the weekend, but look at these career numbers. Well, and to 90 career home runs, she's now tied Stacey Newman in the, in the record books. One of the all-time greats who played at UCLA, our former colleague. As Jennings takes one outside. Jocelyn Allo, by the way, 122 home runs. That is the all-time record. Allo was a senior a couple years ago under Coach Gasso. Well, some JT there in the middle. Well, there's Oklahoma having fun. That's one of the pieces that's maybe been missing as of late. This season has felt like a ton of pressure for that, that entire lineup. So throughout the team, one of the main points that Coach Gasso has talked about wanting to get back to is just having fun. 2-2 pitch. On the way to Jennings with Parker over at first. Sends another one into the overflow stand. So let's take a look at what Tiare did with the mistake pitch. We talked to the head coach for UCF and she said that was an off-speed rise that was called on the watch. That is not a pitch that is typically thrown by that pitcher. And what she didn't shake it off, she didn't call time. She went with the call and because of it left it big for a huge hitter. And a huge strikeout for Felton to get Jennings swinging. That rise ball is always the pitch that is so hard to lay off of because it is the one that you know you can give a ride, but that one way out of the zone, she knew as soon as she let the bat go off her shoulder, that expression on her face tells it all, but look at that in the circle. Felton knows that's a big out. Sends Pickering into the plate, who was another true freshman. And the th one of, among the great stop, by the way, by Cody behind the plate, another of the numbers that we don't have enough no, you know, graphics to show, that's only the ninth time all year that Jennings has struck out. No, she is one of the players that has great hand-eye coordination, is able to square up most balls, but we talked about it, Pam. She's pushing a ton of pressure on herself to produce right now. And then taking off a little bit of a lumber down to second base, but 
Parker is safe. But it looks like she may have tweaked something, Pam, on that slide into second. Great throw, a little off the mark, but it looks like she may have torn her pants. She's fussing with her the pants on her right leg. Oh, and she's got a brace. Come on, Tell you what, these players play with so much pressure, number one, but to be able to produce and have the target on your back the way that Oklahoma has all year long, everyone, everybody wants to be in their shoes, to be the big dog on campus and be the one that sits at the number one, number two slot in the rankings, but it comes with a ton of pressure. One, two to Pickering, off the plate. Cody, one of 11 seniors on this UCF team doing the catching, also one of the best hitters that they have ever had. Getting ready to receive the Felton pitch. Wow, what a start. Felton is dealing, took a little something, something off that one, got it down in the bottom of the zone. So she's now got a strikeout on the rise out of the zone and now takes a little velocity off of it. Beautiful position outside part of the plate. Swing and miss, second strikeout of the game. Jennings and Pickering back-to-back -back strikeouts. Parker down at second, Kinsey Hansen in the cleanup role. Three hits in this series, all of them came in game one. Anton, one of those players who has missed time each season that she's played. Injury has kept her out this season, missed nine games in mid-March. Started just one of 13 during that stretch, dealing with a little bit of a banged up knee, which I'm sure all catchers can relate to. Well, I don't know about you, Pam, but I feel like Kenzie Hansen has played for Oklahoma <laughs> for the past 15 years. She's been one of the stalwarts in the lineup for so many seasons. Crazy to think that this will be her last year at Oklahoma. Leading the team in batting average at 426. Oklahoma has four players hitting at least 400 and five more hitting at least 344. That's nine players hitting 344 or better heading into this game. And they're not all in the starting lineup. That's right. the crazy part. You've got above average hitters sitting on their bench. And Hanson just got a piece of it. Humphreys just nipped over there as Hanson hustled down the line. She says, bad knees, what? The kind of speed she showed down the line, that's impressive. And as Humphreys comes across to get this ball and get the dish, it looks as though she didn't have a great grip on the ball, so couldn't get the throw off with much velocity, which gave Hanson the opportunity to get down the line. And an opportunity for Jada Coleman now with two outs and runners on the corners. Hit a home run in game one. Oklahoma won that 10-2. A couple of big innings. You just can't take a breath with this lineup. No, and focus is one of the things that many pitching coaches across the country talk about that they need their pitchers to have from pitch to pitch is that singular focus with execution. And if you take a break on any pitch against this lineup for Oklahoma, you're going to pay. Coleman, who has been in the leadoff spot for much of her career. Now hitting number five. 419 with runners in scoring position, which is just a little over her season average. That's how good she has been, and we have seen her make some spectacular plays, too, in center field during her career. Well, and the crazy thing is, she's had two error-free seasons, but committed an error for the first time yesterday in so many years. Takes a ball. And now has a 3-1 pitch on the way. Alyssa Brito is on deck. That's a two-out walk, and the bases are loaded for Brito. 
That was a beautiful spot by Felton. I thought for sure that nipped the corner, but what you're finding in the first inning is Felton still feeling out the edges of the plate and figuring out the strike zone. The ball has not left the infield, and here are the bases loaded. A hit by pitch, an infield single, and now a walk. Brito has a home run in this series, had it in game one. And takes a strike. And there's the spot she was trying to hit in that last pitch. To be able to hit corners and stay consistent, use that change of speed, that will be longevity for Felton in the circle. Oh, that's nasty. That change of speed. It's one of those pitches as a hitter, when you know it is in her arsenal, you have to be ready for it in every pitch. She trusts it even late in the count, but now that she sits at 0-2, you've got to be ready for velocity and also for that changeup in any pitch. Got her! What an inning! Times, but she throws in the mid to upper 60s, and now on the attack of the strike zone with that changeup. Sana Halajan will start things off for UCF. She is a freshman, also does some pitching. In fact, pitched in game one and had an RBI double yesterday in the seventh inning. The only run in a two to one heartbreaker. Oklahoma, two hits. Both of them resulted in runs, an RBI double, and then the home run by Jennings. Lajan, actually, a senior, pardon me. One of the seniors being honored today. Their numbers are out on the outfield grass. And she's facing Nicole May. The last time these two teams played, the only time these two teams played before this weekend, now that they're both in the Big 12, two years ago, the Super Regional in Norman, and Nicole May was one of the starting pitchers in that Super. That's popped up, handled by the second baseman, Torres. So Nicole May is back, and it was May who gave up the only run that UCF scored in the entire Super Regional, and it was Cody who we will see batting third in this inning who got the home run off of May. That was a solo shot, the only run that UCF has ever scored in Super Regionals. She has been just one of the, one of the standout performers for UCF in her entire career. Very special player. This is her fifth and final year of eligibility. Here's Shannon Doherty, also a fifth-year player. She has a hit in this series and has been hit by a pitch more than any other night in the history of this program. Has worn, has worn four of them this season. <laughs> and she, Coach Bear just had so many good things to say about her, the ultimate leader, a four-year captain, and one of those players that she is struggling to figure out how to handle not being in the lineup next year. A lot of people to replace for both teams. Again, 11 seniors for the Knights. There's Bear. Great nickname, by the way. Uh, given that, ball, that nickname in Travel Ball by Gary Fawcett, who passed away this past year. She was sleeping in the back of a big, like it was a Suburban, and they said she fell asleep right away when she got in the back, and they, and coach said she was sleeping like a hi hibernating bear. Yeah, she said that's not really the nickname you want as a teenage girl, but <laughs> it has stuck and still being used here. And she has learned to love it. Doherty gets the one out walk. Here comes Cody. Well, and when it comes to Nicole May, she doesn't give up a ton of free passes, but the great discipline by Doherty draws that walk, just Nicole May's 21st walk of the season. Cody, certainly one of the favorites here among the fans. Sends that one into left center field, but it is playable and caught for the first out by Pickering. Well, when it comes to squaring up a pitcher, you have to be on time. Cody was a little ahead of that pitch by May, which was an easy fly out to left. So now with 
one away. Here's Chloe Evans playing right field today. Second year at UCF, played a couple of years at the University of Minnesota where she was a second team Big Ten performer. And is probably enjoying playing outside a lot better. <laughs> and there's the Evans family and I don't know that the stocking hack is, hat is needed, <laughs> right? This time of year in UCF, but it's a great hat, and that's Dad cheering on Chloe. Dad was in that oversized knit hat that you saw. That's a great hat. That makes a statement. <laughs> Chloe, by the way, from Seymour, Wisconsin, where you need hats like that. Yeah. Not needed in Orlando. Evans hit a home run in game one. She was two for four, a double and a home run. Not bad, two extra base hits off of Oklahoma. Good discipline on that pitch on the outside part of the plate. When you sit with two strikes, you have to protect, but to be able to have that slower heart rate, allow your emotions to stay calm, to stay disciplined on the zone, so important. Full count with Doherty. Over at first, that's tagged a long way and is a fair ball. Chloe Evans with the two-run shot, her second homer of the weekend. The Knights blast on top. To say that Chloe Evans is seeing the ball well this weekend may be an understatement, Pam. Not many players had a hit yesterday, and she is now Four for eight on the weekend, and this perhaps the biggest hit of the day. This one, huge shot. Stayed inside the foul pole, her seventh home run of the year, the team's 32nd long ball, and gives them the two-run advantage. Seven home runs for Evans, leads the team, and her dad is going around high-fiving people. He was right, right behind the plate when he was video shooting it on his phone the whole time. So let's hope he got a good shot of that. Now he could take his bucket and sit back down among the people. <laughs> I tell you what, it, it, it's a 50-50 shot. When you start videotaping your kid or video recording your kid, I feel like every time I would video my kids, they would strike out or they'd pop fly foul ball. And that's a big uh, I, I, opportunity for dad to be able to now post that on social media and say, I was there. Yeah, I blame big, you for your moment. kid not, uh, wow. not, wow, not, Pam. not delivering here. Wow, <laughs> not cool. But I always did take the blame, it's true. That, of course. Car, that car ride home was, al yeah. it was always my fault. Couldn't be there for it. No, heavens now. So Evans with that two run shot, followed by another Evans, Aubrey, no relation, from Florida. And that's a, that's a good sign, 19-2, 5 and own conference play. And yes, UCF is in the Big 12. It's hard to keep track these days. That's a base hit. So three base runners here in the first inning off Nicole May. When one of the things that happens to May at times in the circle in this her senior season is she gets too careful and asks, especially off of after a home run, she needs to be gritty, she needs to pitch free, but it's hard when you give up that home run, you give up the lead and now have to face more batters in the lineup who are looking to save this series from being a sweep. Sarah Willis, the University of Washington transfer. Rocking the purple hair this afternoon. She is a good pitcher and also a very good hitter for this team. She got the start yesterday in the circle and did all she could, all she could, right? A complete game, her eighth of the year, 119 pitches, just two hits, but they both resulted in OU run. She pops out to end the inning, but Chloe Evans comes up big. With that, it's given her an opportunity to celebrate those that are extraordinary around us. Sydney Sanders took the first pitch into right field and was flown out to start the second inning. Pam Ward, Jenny Dalton Hill joining you. And yes, UCF, two run home run by Chloe Evans to take the lead against Oklahoma. And Evans out there in right field. Riley Boone in the number eight spot. 
tries to get the bunt down. Boone now a junior, has just one hit in this series, but had been hitting around 400 since late February. And this weekend struck out for only the sixth time this year. Yeah, and this is a hitter who has hit over 400 since February 25th. A lot of tap and go with her. The defense will squeeze her to try to take advantage of a ball that's going to be left right near the plate. Even if she's swinging away, she's looking to just get high hops to give herself a chance to get down the line. Slapper's still such an important part of our game. Some people say that it's a dying part of the sport, but I'm going to say it's alive and well when you see players like Riley Boone. This could be such a weapon. Coach Gasso, we had a chance to talk to her before the season and talked about Boone's work ethic. She said she works hard, swings hard, and plays hard. <laughs> That's what you want. Right up the middle, and Riley Boone's got herself a one-out single. And no, the crowd is not booing. That is them chanting for Boone. And it's, it's funny, when we talked to Coach Gasso, she said, yeah, when she was, when they first started doing that cheer, she thought they were booing her. And then she realized, oh, wait, they're actually celebrating me. And that hit right there, such a good job to keep it under the glove and going right back up the middle, get a hit in the inning. Number nine hitter, Lena Torres is the second baseman. And Pam, I would expect to see Boone on the move. She's got six stolen bases on the year, a ton of speed out there, but it's hard for base stealers this season knowing that it is a reviewable play over there at first base to see if they left early. Yeah, it's kind of changed the game a little bit, certainly. And Oklahoma on the year has 55 stolen bases as a team. They've only been caught stealing 10 times. And there are quite a few Oklahoma fans, to say the least. This is a very tough ticket. The resale market was hot. But behind the Oklahoma dugout, that whole section is in is it crimson and cream, right? Those are their colors, or is that Alabama? I'm getting in trouble, aren't I? I I'm not going to uh -oh. step on that one, Pam. <laughs> I will be chastised. Maroon, a lot of maroon over there. And you see the fake throw there by Cody, who is a good catcher. And Boone over there at first base kind of dancing around a little bit. There's a great shot of all the... Oklahoma fans, many of whom I, I would assume don't even live in Oklahoma. They're like, they're a national team. They're like America's team. It seems like it. They've been able to get so much support all around the country. That's a trouble for Willis. No, it's not. Come on now. Sarah Willis just chased it down. Boone had to quickly retreat to first. I mean, talk about versatile Sarah Willis. Huge wheels out there and left, tracks it down, gets it back in, prevents any advancement. That right there is amazing action. Yeah, she didn't round it. No, if you round it, you definitely have, have to, to touch it and come back. But she had never advanced all the way to second base. But Coach Bear uses one of her challenges on that one. So she has one left. Two away, one on for Ella Parker. Hit by a pitch, and as you saw, stole a base back in the first inning, but was stranded after Caitlin Felton, who's in the circle, struck out the side, left the bases loaded in the first inning. Oklahoma doesn't do that very often. That outside pitch with velocity, I think is the pitch that I would hunt as a hitter, knowing that it's pretty flat. It doesn't have a ton of upspin on it. Knowing I could let it travel and expect to drive that one to the outfield. Parker drives one to the outfield and drives it out. Ella Parker ties it up. What a freshman year she is having for the Sooners.
Well, and Pam, when you step on campus your freshman year, there's very low expectations. And when you step in the box, you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders because you're just trying to gain that starting spot. Ella Parker, as a freshman, is a breath of fresh air at the top of the lineup who has been around hitting her entire life her eighth home run of the season and has handled pressure so well for Oklahoma. Sometimes being naive is the perfect attack plan. Yeah, that's what Coach Gasso said. Sometimes, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You just get up there and hit. Here's T.R.A. Jennings, who in her first at bat struck out on a rise ball against Felton. Jennings is chasing the all-time RBI record held by someone about three feet away from me, <laughs> Jenny Dalton. And that record has stood for a long, a long, long, a long, long, long time. time. I was going to say a long time. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a minute. It's been a hot second, almost three decades. Jennings in the air, playable for Doherty. To schedule harder so that they had a chance to not just host at home, but to be prepared for the postseason. Got to their first Super Regional a couple years ago. Rowe puts it down and Brito pounces on it. When Oklahoma has been so good defensively this year in that one, they put on a defensive shift, brought in the right fielder, moved everybody over, but the tap and go not successful for Janisha Rowe as she's so fast down the line. But because of the shift, it gives Alyssa Brito the chance to be so far towards home plate that she gets the out. Sierra Humphrey is the third baseman of the youngsters on this team, just a freshman. Got a hit in game one of this series. And one of the qualities that Coach Ball Malone talked about when she discussed Humphreys was just how feisty she was at the plate, how gritty of a player that she is. And I'd have to say that that comes from her mom, who I was able to play with at the University of Arizona, Krista Gomez at the time was one of those players that I had to figure out second base with. She and I split time freshman year and Krista pushed me to be better every day and that grit definitely comes from mom. Handled by Sanders, two quick outs for May who scuffled a little bit in the first inning, giving up a walk and then the two run homer to Chloe Evans and another single before getting out of it. And now Jasmine Williams, who is one of the seniors we talked about. She's a wife and a mom and her husband and young son are in the building. The dad Z, I don't Where's the baby? <laughs> Are you now a baby chaser, Pam? Um, what is that? No. But baby Z Bryson is out there, but there's the hus there's Jazz's husband Z. You know that Z Bryson is just uh, running all over. Yeah, can't imagine what that entails. And look what mom did. She got a stinging single with two outs. That's right, you clap about that right there for sure. That, that ball was stung. I mean, it got past Brito so quick and was able to go upstairs, stay on top and drive that ball in the five, six hole. That's the way you get things started. And now ton of speed at first base as she flips the lineup over. Elijah popped out her first time up. Is always a threat in this lineup. Where's number 98? Going for her master's degree in business management. It's a famous 98 for Oklahoma. Your favorite. Yeah. Alo touched him up for some home runs in that Super Regional a couple of years ago when UCF decided to pitch to her. Yeah, we were baffled by that. And they challenged her. They weren't afraid to go at her, and Alo took advantage. Coming up at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, the NBA playoffs first round rolls on. Game four between the Mavs and the Clippers. L.A. trying to even up this series. Yeah, that's, things have gotten a little chippy in game three with a couple of player ejections.
Mavericks did pull off the win, though. NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs in full force. And we are heading towards the end of the college softball season. Just one more weekend after this in the regular season, including mayhem. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, both in the top five in the nation. I tell you what, this whole season has felt like mayhem. Teams all over the country putting up wins against teams that perhaps they shouldn't have. This Oklahoma squad feeling the pressure, losing more this year than all of last year. Four losses on the season, three of them coming in Big 12 play. Four losses, four times as many losses as last year. They lost to Baylor in what was a non-conference game early on by one run, and that was all that separated them from a perfect season, which in softball is almost impossible to imagine, much less execute. 3-1, hitters count for Hulajan, and she sends it into center field. Coleman goes back and watches it fly. Hulajan, with the two-run shot, puts the Knights back on top. UCF showing up in a big way. They do not want to get swept. And Nicole May has now been touched up for two home runs in this game. That ball was left down Main Street. And your job as a hitter is to find a pitcher's mistake. And that one was left big. Her third home run of the year and gives UCF an opportunity to pull ahead by two. Chloe Evans with the two-run shot in the last inning, and now Halajan does it. And rightfully so, celebrating in the dugout. Shannon Doherty walked and scored on Evans' home run in the first inning. Now, Nicole May had pitched 62 innings on the year heading into this game and had given up only seven home runs all year, and she's given up two home runs in two innings today. And the pressure can just sit on you heavy. Nicole May has been so good in the circle. Her ERA last season, a .91. She was a perfect 18-0 on the season a year ago through 107 and two-thirds innings. This year, ERA has jumped up, started the game at a 2.15 ERA. And when you start to feel the pressure, you can throw through your spin. You can lose focus in a game can get too careful and leave balls big. And I think that's what we're seeing out of May here today. A lot of pitchers would love to have a 2.15 ERA, but for May, certainly elevated when she was sub one. That goes a long way. And going a long way, Pickering to grab it in the corner to end the inning. But two, we'll see Hansen that second in this inning. Pickering made a nice grab to end the inning, but Oklahoma has given up four runs in this game. This is only the fifth time all year Oklahoma has given up four runs or more in a softball game. And this is their 49th game of the season. That's a lot of math for you, Pam. I know, and I, it might even be accurate, but <laughs> that just go, they just don't give up a lot of runs. On average, teams score one and a half runs per game on them coming in to today. Pickering struck out against Felton in the first inning. Felton feeling pretty good out there, right? The cook goes out there with a, another two-run lead. Gave up the two-run home run to Parker in the last inning. And Felton just needs to be careful that she keeps her emotions in check. She does have that. The situation happens where she will throw through her spin when she starts to get a little too emotional, but look at the way that they've been able to hold teams at bay. On the left, the season averages for the, how many runs those teams score per game. On the right, how UCF has been able to hold teams below the season average for each of those teams. And it comes down to just being so good in the circle and staying focused pitch to pitch. That's just in the Big 12, Oklahoma State. Just under their season average, Oklahoma State swept that season series in Stillwater. But this is the first year in the Big 12 for UCF, who's been in the American. It's like uh, revolving conferences now. Is Before that, before the American, they were in Conference USA. They won the 
American regular season in tournaments a couple of times, won the American Conference last year, and now in the Big Bad Big 12, which will be reshuffled again next year when Oklahoma and Texas go to the SEC. 2-2 to Pickering, just spoiled it to stay alive. We have not seen that outside pitch called consistently for a strike off the plate. I think he's been very consistent with where he has been calling that pitch a strike back behind the dish. Home plate umpire Steve Gould here today. Another 2-2. Two -two. Fills up the count. couple of hits so far in this series in the number three slot in this potent lineup. Boy, Felton is not pleased by that call. Yeah, Felton wanted that one. That's a tough one because what we saw was Pickering fouling off that pitch and I thought she brought this one tight enough onto the plate to nip the corner. I thought that was going to be a strikeout, but Oklahoma celebrating another walk the second walk that Felton's given up today. So Cody try to frame it a little bit better, moved her glove towards the plate a little bit. Here's Hansen, who showed her speed with an infield single in the first. Hansen, a first team All-American last year. Oklahoma winning three straight. Women's College World Series. They've won five out of the last seven titles, six out of the last 10, and seven overall. One fewer than Arizona. Throw behind. Well, and I like that trickery that's going on, over, trickeration that's going on over at first base <laughs> with the first baseman, Shannon Doherty, playing towards the pitching circle. Sometimes that can dupe a, a runner to get off the bag a little bit farther, but heads up play by Pickering, knowing that the back pick was there by Aubrey Evans. And Cody with a good arm behind the plate. Hansen sends it out of play. Able to do something that's never been done. That gets away and allows Pickering to go down to second base. Yeah, these seniors are doing things that not many people have done in our sport. And while there are more seniors than that, those are the tried and trues who have been here, been on campus for the Sooners since day one. And they've been able to garner a ton of accolades, but also lead this program into unprecedented places. Second now is Hansen just got a piece of that. <laughs> well, and Hansen's looking at Cody because she knows what that feels like. Hansen's worn a few foul balls in her day. But you see the earpiece there for Cody as that becomes part of the communication system from the dugout to the catcher. Very interesting. Things changing now with the electronic wristbands. Signaling in pitches now, which is faster. There you see it. So much more effective, but it was actually a miscue yesterday. A pitch, a button got stuck by head coach Cindy Ball Malone. Another one. So two free bases for Pickering. When we've talked about how losing focus in the circle can be a struggle. And for Felton, she's been so good out there, but those balls moving so much that they're getting away from Cody and giving Oklahoma a chance just 60 feet away now with no outs. A couple of wild pitches by Felton, allowed Pickering to get the third, and now she's given up her second walk of the inning. Coleman, Brito, Sanders due up here, and here's Jada Coleman, who drew the first walk off Felton in the first inning. Just a couple of things that Jada Coleman has done in her career at Oklahoma and has made some big time Sports Center top tens with her plays in center. How about a squeeze bunt? The shuffle over, the umpire goes down, and the call is safe. And 
And Pickering went over to see if Steve Gold was okay. I mean, that's a crazy play. Knowing that runs are at a premium right now, the shuffle pass from the pitcher DeVoe into Cody disrupts the umpire, Steve Gould, but he has a good look of it as Pickering slides wide to be able to get the hand on the plate. Does the tag come in before the hand touches the plate? No, it gets that back point or back tip of the plate before the tag is able to be applied. Typically, you want your runner to glove with that throw. You've got to dish that toss a little lower. And they do confirm the safe call. And so no challenges left for UCF, and we're just here in the third inning. Well, and with all the craziness that happened back behind the plate, not only was it a squeeze, a successful squeeze play that advanced the runner's one bag with everything going on at home plate, everybody's now moved up into scoring position for Oklahoma. So Coleman with the squeeze, reaches on the fielder's choice, Hansen over at third, and here's Brito, who struck out her first time up against departed starter Caitlin Felton. And how are you successful against a thumber? You bunt, and that's exactly what that squeeze play did. You don't expect to see Jada Coleman bunting, but it was a great call, and Oklahoma now pulls within one. With Coleman up, you're expecting that the ball could leave the ballpark, and instead she lays down the perfect bunt. Chaos ensued, and Oklahoma was able to get back to within one run. Two two-run home runs for check swing that time for Brito, who started her career at Oregon. Third year at Oklahoma, where she has been spectacular. Second behind Hansen in batting average so far this season. Well over 400. Waits on it, gets it in front of Willis. She bobbles it, so two runs will score easily for Oklahoma, and Brito ends up on second. What a difference a couple of pitches makes. I mean, this UCF team has played well defensively. They've had errors in this series, but this ball squared up out into left, and because it gets on top of Willis so quickly, it's an in-between hop that actually eats her up, gets all the way to the wall. Oklahoma able to gain the advantage and now takes the lead off that huge hit by Brito. So Brito all for Oklahoma. Sanders flew out against starter Caitlin Felton, who lasted two innings plus two batters. And Felton responsible for four of the five runs. Sanders into right field. Chloe Evans grabs it. The tag by Brito gets into third base with one away. Sanders has been more patient at the plate this year, but that pitch just gets underneath it. Does advance the runner. That's an important piece of this because knowing that Boone likes to use the left side of the field as a slapper, it gave Brito the opportunity to get over there to third. Boone singled and scored on Parker's home run in the second inning. And you see the infield corners pinching in. Humphreys at third, Doherty at first. Yeah, everybody's so tight on the plate knowing that Boone is a touch and go type hitter. She was able to punch it back up the middle under the glove of the pitcher in her first at bat. But defense definitely knows that this is not going to be a 
hard hit ball. She's looking to use her wheels to get down the line. And if you take an opportunity to look at third base, to look back Brito, you're in trouble because Boone's going to be down the line. This is a situation where you've got to pick it up and throw or pick it up and go after Brito. On the 1-1, one, one, there's the bunt, but it goes foul. And that was another squeeze. She was taking off on, on the drag bunt. And so now the conversation between Coach Gasso and her runner at third base is an important one because with two strikes, if the ball is tried to be bunted and it goes foul, she's automatically out. So expect to see the barrel moving through the zone on this one. Defense playing well in, and what a blast. Literally took the glove off of Jewel. Boone gets the RBI single. Yeah, we talk about how Boone doesn't have a lot of power. She does have one home run on the year, but look at the way she squares this pitch up right back at Grace Jewel to the point that it does take the glove off the hand of Jewel, scores another run for Oklahoma, and now they've got wheels at first base. And we know that Jewel throws fastball, not pitches with a ton of movement. Because of that, when the ball comes into a spot, you can square it up. Now, Torres, who flew out on a nice catch over and left by Willis. And her first at bat. And the glove didn't hit in the pocket area. It kind of hit the side of the glove, and it ripped it right off of Jewel's hand. And because of those comebackers to the circle, we've seen a lot of pitchers start wearing masks to protect the face. We've seen, unfortunately, some really big injuries to pitchers wearing pitches off the face that have come right back to them, realizing that the pitching plate that the pitcher throws from is at 43 feet. The circle is eight feet around that. So when they release the pitch, they're sometimes 35 feet from the bat. And when the ball's coming off the bat at about over 100 miles an hour, there's not enough time to react. It's just, that's foul. Another hard hit ball, this time by Torres. Nice frame, but they do get the call. A little dramatic delayed strikeout call by Steve Gould. And this, this pitch is that outside corner that I feel like was the pitch Felton was looking for, the starter in the game for UCF. Cody, nice receive, very quiet receive back behind, gives Gould the chance to see it and ring up Torres. First strikeout for Jewel who is the third pitcher, not just in this game, but the third pitcher used in this inning by UCF. Ella Parker hit a home run off the starter Felton her last time up. Tied the game up at two temporarily. And Jewel not afraid to go inside to these hitters. You know Ella Parker is a dangerous bat. She had a home run in her last at bat. An absolute blast. She knows that the corners are going to be so important to touch them up, not leave it big. Parker taps it, picked up by the third baseman. Humphreys, who has to hurry. Nice play because Parker runs really well. But what do you liked about your swings, particularly against May? Uh, I just think we were aggressive and we're taking our hacks and we, we haven't done that maybe the whole series. So love that we're doing it today. Well, and you've, you've always used a bunch of pitchers out of the pen. What are you trying to do with all of the changes last inning? Yeah, I mean, these are some of the best hitters in the country. So just trying to keep them off balance as best we can. All right, thank you very much. And <laughs> Kelly Maxwell's in the game now. So the Knights will get a look at her again. Maxwell coming over from arch rival Oklahoma State. Got the game one win in this series. When she started the year with some hiccups, so many changes in analytics, video, game prep, and because of that, she's struggled. But as of late, she has gotten back on the Kelly Maxwell that we remember. Mid 60s, uses more rise ball this year, and now throws twice as many drop balls than we've seen in the past. In a series, it's not unusual on Sunday for. Coaches to kind of empty the bucket with all of their pitchers. And Jada Cody, the first person that Maxwell sees.
Cody had a couple of hits in game one. Knights with two two-run home runs, but Oklahoma using pretty much everything in their arsenal. Some bunts, power, speed to catch up and pass what had been a four to two night lead. Well, and how unique is that, Pam? Normally we use, we're used to just Oklahoma blasting bombs, but now this year using short game to get runs up on the board too. Oh, what a play by Brito. Does she have enough time to throw her out? Yes, Alyssa Brito with the spectacular grab at third and then Sydney Sanders able to stay on the bag at first. Well, not only does she glove this one up, but she's strong enough to be able to throw all the way across the diamond with from her knees. I mean, Pam, that right there is a highlight play. That, I thought the ball was going to get in the 5-6 hole, but the angle that Brito was able to take to glove it, but then also come up with the throw and Sanders able to stay on first base. That right there, huge defensive play to start off the inning for Oklahoma. And remember that there are no more challenges left for UCF. No, she was safe on that, or out on that play, excuse me, but uh, both challenges used in the first couple of innings by UCF. What a play that was from the knees, as you mentioned. It would have been tough enough. Didn't have time to stand up and throw, and she took a chance and threw out Cody. Here's Chloe Evans, who hit a two-run home run off Nicole May, and her only at bat so far. Oklahoma, the best fielding team in the country on top of everything else. The number one fielding percentage of any team. There are 307 Division I softball teams we looked up today, and Oklahoma number two in RPI, right behind Texas. Hook Hookham, Texas. Yeah, that hasn't happened in quite a few years with Oklahoma falling out of the number one spot. But those two losses to them in Big 12 play pushed them below. The crazy thing is, though, when you look at the standings in the Big 12, Oklahoma's actually in number one by half a game. And so not only do they, do they f fall down in RPI, but they still lead the Big 12. Well, Texas and Oklahoma will be in the SEC next year. Evans flies out to Coleman. Yeah, but Evans is seeing the ball well. That one was squared up. It didn't have the height to be able to travel far enough, but she hit that one right on the nose. Aubrey Evans with a single back in the first inning. And I think the pitch for Kelly Maxwell that's she's used in the past that has not really come back into her arsenal as strong this year is that changeup. Last season it was hit at a .040 batting average. This year up to a 195. So it's getting hit a little bit harder. I'd like to see that changeup used here to be able to attack these UCF hitters. Falls behind Evans 2-0. Three straight balls. Yeah, but look at that. From last year to this year, the batting averages on that changeup for Maxwell, it's increased quite a bit this season. And because of that, she's been hit a little bit harder. Pardon me, the count two and one now evens up at two and two. Head coach Patty Gasso told us before the series started that. Right now, Kelly Maxwell is the best that she's been all season, really clicking, as you mentioned, the last three or four weeks. Backhanded by the shortstop, Jennings. A certain amount of games, Allo went on to hit 122 in her career, smashing the previous record. And here's Jennings, who is 0 for 2 today, did have a solo home run yesterday, and she is in pursuit of the all-time RBI record, she is 299 of them in her career with 90 home runs. But struggling in this series, just one for nine, that one was the home one run, pardon me, we referenced yesterday. Jenny Dalton, 328 
Olive fell just short. Look at the Arizona contingency, three of the top four. Well, when it comes to those Arizona bats, all three of us played together. So can you imagine the kind of run production we were able to put up when we hit three, four, five? I hit three. Leah Bratz hit five. Laura Espinosa hit four. So we were Oklahoma-ish, or are the Oklahoma yes. bats Arizona-ish? I don't know. But when it comes to the run production, Tiare Jennings chasing some pretty big names. She's behind one and two to Jewel. When we mentioned it already, but that home run yesterday actually tied her for sixth on the all-time career home run list, tying her with Stacy Newman. She hit her 90th home run yesterday, that solo shot that gave Oklahoma the win. Newby, one of the all-time greats, terrific catcher at UCLA on the national team for several years as well. Taps it back. Jewel gets her. Jennings 0 for 3. Yeah, Stacy Newman now the head coach at San Diego and able to at San Diego State and able to take them to the Women's College World yeah. Series. Awesome. Newby, one of the all-time good good humans. In Actually, the sport. They, they lost to Utah, didn't they? Yeah, they're in the Supers, right? Yep. yep. Which was a great job. The Aztecs. Here's Pickering who walked and scored in a wild third inning that saw a couple of walks, a couple of wild pitches, and that is another Boomer Sooner home run. Pickering's turn to knock out her sixth of the season. Well, look at the players that are showing up in such a big way here today, Pam. It's the freshmen, the ones who maybe aren't feeling the pressure, like some of these other players for Oklahoma who are trying to go for the four-peat. Pickering, huge bomb. I mean, that one was a no-doubter. On the pull side, able to just crush that ball over the fence, her sixth home run of the year. Kinsey Hansen. Infield single and a walk as Oklahoma has extended its lead to seven to four. They have scored five unanswered runs after UCF went up four to two in the second inning thanks to a couple of two run home runs. Oklahoma trying to go for the series sweep before they take on Oklahoma City. And this is just what Kinsey's done in the postseason. Yeah, and when it comes to Kinsey Hansen, she actually turns it on when it gets down the stretch. She is at her best at the end of the year. And they're going to need Kinsey Hansen at her best, knowing that there are so many big games still to be played by Oklahoma. They have Oklahoma State next weekend to finish out their Big 12, their Big 12 schedule. And then they head into the Big 12 tournament, where they're going to try to come away with another Big 12 title before they head to the SEC next year. Hansen finds the grass to get the one-out base hit. Her second hit of the game. Hansen actually hitting about 30 points higher in Big 12 games than she is overall. And you're right, she was all World Series team last year and absolutely turns it up in May and early June. And she's leading this team in batting average. For her to be able to be at her best right now, so important. She did have some knee, in, knee issues earlier this season that kept her out of some game you up. If your pitches sit flat, they're going to maybe see the other side of the wall. Cochran comes in, first time this series we've seen her, and she gets to take on Jada Coleman, who has been on, pay, on base twice today, a walk and a bunt. Squeeze bunt back in the third inning, the four-run third inning. They got going. <laughs> <laughs> they found they found their swings, but it's the youth of the program that is really coming up big for them right now. Coleman shows bunt. 
Cody fakes a throw down to first. And, and Patty Gasso talking about all the things that are on these athletes' plates. They're business women now. You know, they got schoolwork, social media. She's always concerned about mental health aspects. There's just so much now with the portal and the NIL. The wild pitch sends Hansen down to second. When you talk to Coach Patty Gasso about what this year feels like, she says it feels the, like the difference between defending a national championship and chasing the title. She says we try to put it in terms of like in the armed forces, are you defending your country or fighting for your country? When you, when you defend a country, you're holding people back and the threat comes at you. But when you're fighting for your country, you're loading up and you're going at people. Jada Coleman called time but didn't get it. And then Cochran threw a ball. And the conversation now happening between Coleman and the umpire to understand why she didn't get that timeout call. Yeah, pardon me, Jada Coleman. Cochran is the pitcher. He spoils it. And Coleman, among the seniors that Coach Gasso talked about, Hanson, Jennings, Coleman, May Boone, said those five have been five of the most important players ever to come through this program. And that's saying something because they've had a ton of them. Yeah, but they're in uncharted territory, feeling the pressure of the expectations that are coming at them. And Gasso feels like the pressure has created softball to feel like a job rather than a game. Pops it up. Williams drifts over to grab it for the second out of the inning. Pam, I remember what it felt like to try to step up after we had won two national championships and in my junior season, we fell short to UCLA in the finals. We're not able to repeat and then won it my senior year. So we did win three, not in a row, but the pressure to perform is so much different when you feel like you're defending your championship rather than going at it for the first time. Burrito. Into foul territory, good chase by Doherty, but she couldn't catch up. And since 2000, Oklahoma has been the dominant yes. team across the country. Back in the 80s and 90s, you would have seen Arizona and UCLA at the top of that, but they have fallen short of the mark, and Oklahoma has gained that title and become the queens of the sport. She really despises being called right now, seven Natty Patty. She doesn't love that. <laughs> no. But she's certainly 21st century Patty. Since the turn of the century, Oklahoma has been the softball program. And the crazy thing is they leave the Big 12. She's had 15, 15 times she's been the Big 12 coach of the year. <laughs> she was the first Big 12 coach to 400 conference wins and then yesterday able to grab Win number 1,500, just the, now the third coach in winning behind Carol Hutchins, who leads it, Mike Candrea, number two, Patty Gasso etching her name and climbing the ladder. One, two pitch, off speed, and. Brito doesn't bite on it. Energy in the dugout. They, with the uh, early start, started at 11. They're going to be able to get on their charter and get home to Norman before it's too late tonight. Oh, actually, she corrected us. It's not a charter. They're flying commercial home. That shocks me. Well, we drove in from Tallahassee. We had our own we, charter. We asked her, or we asked, why didn't you come pick us up on the way? And we were corrected. Not a charter this weekend. Uh, Tallahassee's not close to Orlando, <laughs> no, by the not. way, if you're wondering. Full count now for Brito with runner on second. What a net bat to draw the walk. Well, the little things continue to be celebrated by Oklahoma. They celebrate the walks, the hit by pitch, the simple outs, knowing that when you celebrate the little things, the game can become more fun as they all feel the pressure of trying to go for Natty Four in a row. Yes. Eight overall. Eight overall. Sydney Sanders has flown out twice to right field, able to advance a runner with a fly ball last time she was up. Sanders really burst onto the scene in a big way. 
2022. She was a freshman at Arizona State. She hit 425 with 21 home runs, which was a Sun Devil single season record. And since coming to Oklahoma, those numbers are not close. No, they are significantly dropped. She has not hit above 300 to end a season. And right now, coming into today, was hitting 282. Just the numbers have not been able to translate since becoming a Sooner. Chance now to knock in some more runs. Takes a ball high. She's still showing good power this year. She had nine home runs last year, 13 on the season this year. And of the 24 hits that she's grabbed coming into today, 15 of them have been for extra bases. Straight back. This is UCF's final home game of the year. They will finish things out up in Ames next weekend at Iowa State before heading to the Big 12 tournament. She go around? Yes, she did. So Sanders strikes out and strands Patty Gasso. And coach, just two hits yesterday. You're seeing better swings today from your team, better approaches? Uh, yeah, definitely. We got a little bit of energy. What I liked is that we answered their scores back twice. And um, it's something that you want to feel as you're going into the end of the season. Well, and with May having some hiccups early on, you go to Maxwell in the circle. What do you like about the way she's been able to progress through this season? Uh, she's really gotten stronger. She's gotten more comfortable, uh, especially as we got into Big 12. But we need all hands on deck as we go forward to um, what they are always looking forward to is postseason and getting into the end of the season to try to be our best. So uh, they're stepping up. All right, and Oklahoma State is up next on your schedule. Thank you so much, Coach Gasso. You're, you're so kind. Thank you, You look Pam. very, you look very, very intimidating in Thank that you. black. Thank you very much. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, you, need to, you two need to stop. <laughs> no, but the, the black is what I'm, she said. You need she, to be intimidated yeah, by like, me, It Pam. was like the, the Raiders with all, you know, the all-black uniforms <laughs> of Opal, and I was concerned she might be hot. And she just goes, no, this is my intimidator look. <laughs> she said you're obviously not intimidated. Yeah, she's... <laughs> Our team's winning as, <laughs> as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. First pitch, and it's not handled over there by the second baseman, Torres. So Willis gets on base to start the fourth inning. And that's a tough play as the second baseman charges that ball hard. You have to make sure you keep your eyes down. And that she kept her chin up. And if you keep your chin up, the ball will eat you up. That's exactly what happened on that play. Those high hops can be some of your my favorite to field over there at second base. But... Ate her up, and Willis took advantage of the miscue. And so Willis will be pinch run for over there at first. Kennedy Searcy coming in to pinch hit for Rowe. This is a trusted bat off the bench for UCF. Coach Bear likes to go to her in these pinch hit situations. Has dealt with some injury this season. Hurt her ACL her freshman year and Quads and hammies can get tired this season, has to come out of the game, and so some limited time for CRC this season. She did pinch hit earlier in this series. And you mentioned before she got hurt, it was on the American Conference rookie team, back-to-back -back first team, all American Conference appearances before they joined the Big 12, which was just this season. Well, that back pick is an important part of the game. Hanson, a very trusted arm behind the dish, but what I need to see is out there in right field, I need Boone to back up that throw. If that ever deflects off of a off of a defender or off of a base runner, they need to have that insurance back there behind to pick it up. Nasty rise ball by Maxwell. 
Gets the big swing and the miss, the strikeout. You know that Maxwell has it in the arsenal, but it's so hard to lay off of knowing that that ball at the letters looks to be one that you can jack, but the pinch hitter goes down as a strikeout. First strikeout of the game for Maxwell. She has 107 on the season in under 100 innings of work. Now Sierra Humphreys. Samantha Del Hoyo is the pinch runner, the freshman over there at first who came in for Willis. That's over the glove of Torres. But Del Hoyo has to stop at second because of some good hustle by Coleman in center. And that's a gritty at bat, busting that one up. Looks like it got her. It looks like it got her jammed up a little bit, but she's just so strong that she's able to push this one over the jump at second base. Just beyond the reach, a little hesitation by the base runner prevents her from being able to go over to third, but what a great at bat, attacking early to put herself on and push a runner in scoring position for UCF. A couple of singles off Maxwell here in the fourth inning. Sends up Jasmine Williams. One of the seniors playing their final game on this field. Started her career, she's a California native, played for three years at Oregon. And again, her husband and baby boy are here. I think they microchipped the baby because we haven't seen him. <laughs> He's just running around. Is that a thing? He's a toddler. Okay, he's, 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 right. not, he's not tiny. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Hansen able to stop it and then throw down to third to get Del Hoyo. Hansen showing her value behind the plate. And I think this is where Coach Cindy Balmalone may question, be upset with herself for challenging the first one early on because she has no challenges left in her arsenal to be able to pull out at this point. But Hansen, beautiful throw down. I mean, Hansen's such a tool back behind the plate to be able to just, she it's a miscue, it's a bobble, and still a strong throw to get the out at third, take away the threat. But with co head coach Cindy Ball Malone, using that challenge early on something that I feel like was not something that needed to be challenged because she doesn't have the ability to go to it here. She just has to take it. Yeah, because that was very close. Williams sends one into foul territory, but an exceptional play again by Hanson behind the plate. First just to stop the pitch and then to be able to throw the ball to Brito to get the pinch runner out. And that's where the experience of a veteran back behind the dish comes into play. Not only was she able to keep the ball in front, but to have the awareness to get the advancing runner. Humphreys was able to take second on the play. Yeah, luck luckily both runners were heads up enough to be moving together. Sometimes you'll see a, an advanced base runner take advantage of those miscues or try to take advantage and then the trailing runners don't. And so Humphreys a good job of advancing as well and not being left at first. chopped foul well, and what I'm noticing is the ground in front of home plate is very hard so I'm surprised that we haven't seen slappers on both sides using that hard ground to get the high hop and the advancement down the lane but Jasmine as a right handed hitter trying to punch some power in this one get it to the outfield and score another run that will do just that down the line here comes Humphreys from second on the RBI double by Williams. On your job on the hot corner is to be able to defend the line. Brito was playing so far off the line that that ball was able to get to the grass without any leather coming in contact with it. I mean, Jazz Williams, one of those players that is so important at the bottom of the lineup because not only does she turn things over, but now you've got wheels on the bases at second. Great run by Humphreys to plate another run for UCF. Now batting number 98, Sona. Oh, and 
now they turn it over to the top of the lineup and Halajian, who hit a two-run home run off starter Nicole May, her last time up. Too close for comfort now, just a two-run lead for Oklahoma. And this rushed in her last at bat, but it was off of a different pitcher of Oklahoma. May, who was the starter, this is Kelly Maxwell. That one is sent toward the wall and Jada Coleman doing Jada Coleman things went a long way. They got swept, but uh, a great senior class for the Knights. And they're within striking distance now, down just seven to five to Oklahoma. This is only the second time all season that teams have scored more than four runs against the Sooners. One of them was in a loss to Louisiana, one of their four losses all season. The other one in a win over Miami, Ohio, who hits a ton of home runs. And they have led the country in home run production all season long. Two big home run hitters at, in their lineup that lead with the long ball. When you talk about seniors for this UCF squad, Coach Bearer talked about how excited she was to see the way that they were performing this year as a great out over there by the freshman Humphreys at third base. We've seen some great plays by the player at the hot corner. That's one where you've got to field it and get rid of it quick, knowing the speed down the line by Riley Boone. Big first out here in the fifth inning. Eight, nine hitters up. Here's Torres now. He was 0 for 2 on the day. This is the fourth pitcher that UCF has used. Caitlin Cochran, that's lifted into right field. For Chloe Evans, two outs now. Oklahoma's had a base runner in every inning. And the fewest batters that have come to the plate in any inning for OU today has been five. And here's a chance for Cochran to set him down in order, but here we are at the top with Ella Parker. Two run home run for the true freshman now leading off. Had an RBI double, one of only two hits yesterday in Oklahoma's two to one win over UCF. Very different story today. Two teams combining for 12 runs through the first four innings. And you see a lot of teams on that game three of a series use a ton of different pitchers, maybe pinch hitters, different runners. I mean, you empty the bucket to try to get that game three win. TRA Jennings on deck too. She's 0 for three. Only has one RBI this weekend. Ella Parker comes definitely from a ball and bat family. Her uncle is the manager of the Dodgers, Dave Roberts. Coach Gasso talked about what an advantage that has been to grow up around the game. Parker sends this one deep and she's done it again. Dave Roberts' niece with her second home run of the game. When it comes to being around hitting, Ella Parker is well-versed in all things hitting. She's been around it her whole life, and as she steps on campus for the Sooners, she sits at the top of the lineup with a ton of power. Not only is that her second home run of the day, that's her ninth home run of the season, and she has found a way to settle into the pressure-filled situations that Oklahoma is used to. Just a freshman for the Sooners, but she is a bright spot. Expect to see her name used for years to come, but I 
I don't know what the conversation was for co head coach Cindy Ball Malone on that one. Without any challenges, she doesn't have the ability to go and get anything from the umpires at this point. Tiari Jennings is just one for 10 this weekend. That was a home run yesterday. Just because Tiari Jennings only has one hit on the weekend does not mean you can settle in and feel comfortable because Tiari Jennings is one of those players that it always has the potential to leave the yard. She squares up the ball well when she's seeing it. Struck out her first at bat on a rise ball and then made an adjustment, popped up to the first baseman in her next at bat, made an adjustment to the next at bat, grounded out back to the pitcher. Let's that one drop in. Jennings with a World Se Women's College World Series career record 29 runs driven in. Just in the 2022 World Series, she had five homers and 15 runs driven in. That was the year in which they eliminated UCF in the Super Regionals. Well, she's sitting on a 25 game on base streak that has the potential to be broken here if she doesn't get on. 3-1 pitch. Pickering is on deck. She hit a home run her last time up. Now a full count. A lot of times hitting comes down to timing. And we've seen that double toe tap by Tiare Jennings. It's a pickup put down that's been a timing mechanism for her her whole career. So you're looking at that left foot, pickup put down. Full count, not playable. Tiare Jennings breaks out of her weekend slump in a big way, her second hit of the series, also her second home run of the series. And that is career RBI number 300. And while I always love a home run, these just mean more to me because I love the way that Tiare Jennings approaches her at bats at the plate. While I never want to lose my record, it would be an honor to lose it to someone to the caliber of Tiare Jennings. That now her 91st home run of her career as she flies it in. Just her second hit of the series, but Pam, both of them have been the long ball. Oklahoma just scratching the surface of her talent, has the best spin rates on the team. So expect to see this ball move through the zone, but she's gonna have to settle into that movement and not just give in to velocity because when you face a velocity pitcher, you don't have to swing as hard. You can just touch it and it's gonna fly. First batter she faces. Cassidy Pickering, who hit a home run her last time up against Jewel, who was the third pitcher for UCF. UCF got a 2-0 lead in this game. The first inning home run by Chloe Evans, then let it 4-2 in the second with a home run by Halagian, who is now pitching. Since then, they've been outscored 8-1. Oklahoma using the long ball very well. Four home runs today. Hit by three different batters. But we expect the home run from Oklahoma. They also used the squeeze bunt early on to put pressure on the defense and scored another run that way. Patty Gasso understands that you're, she's gonna have to use all the tools in her tool belt to be able to come away with another national championship, make a deep run in the postseason and get to, back to that place. Not just the home run this year, they're gonna have to manufacture some runs at times. 3-1 pitch. And expectations always so high for the Sooners. Oklahoma State finishing up with that series. ESPN Networks will have two of those three for you next weekend before we all head into the postseason. Pickering held off. UCF thought she swung. I thought it was a strike, not just a swing. And I think Halagian thought the same thing. She came out of the circle expecting to head to the dugout. This ball is high. It looked as though 
Cody called down for the look, but she does hold up. That's a good hold, and she draws the walk. Kenzie Hansen, Hansen, pardon me, it was a couple of singles today. Made a very good play behind the plate as well earlier. That gets off the glove of Cody. Throw down, not in time as Pickering gets in. When Oklahoma never takes their foot off the gas pedal, you think at times that you might take a pitch off, but in that situation, Pickering definitely ready to go as she takes advantage of a miscue by Cody behind the plate. Always have to be on your toes. And no matter what the score is, they're always going to look to take extra bases, keep the pressure on. Lajian not afraid to go inside on Hansen. Hansen having a spectacular final season for Oklahoma. Turned on it, but it's foul. Not only is Hansen so good at the plate hitting, but she buys strikes back behind the plate for her pitchers. And we've seen so many great names come through the pitching circle. And Hansen has been such a part of the battery in her time for the Sooners. Now it's Hansen's turn to leave the yard. Kenzie Hansen with the two run shot. Oklahoma now up 11 to five. Did you say we're getting close to the postseason, Pam? Because I think that's exactly what Kinsey Hansen has turned on, is the postseason prowess. This ball left. That was a cookie. Oh, probably chocolate chip, because that <laughs> one, there was a big bite out of that one. More Sooners celebrating another home run, the third home run in just four batters for Oklahoma. Five home runs for Oklahoma. Hansen has three hits today as her batting average has skyrocketed. It's 426 coming in. Now Jada Coleman. Been on base a couple of times, but still looking for her first hit. Well, velocity is one of those things coming out of the circle that you you relish, you love seeing a velocity pitcher as a hitter because you know that all you have to do is square it up and the ball's going to fly and that's what they're seeing in this inning. It's a little breezy, the ball going from right to left, but those, pit, those have not been cheap home runs. They've all been hit well. Take a look, a beautiful day here in Orlando. on the way to Coleman with Brito on deck. And these are pretty nice pitches dancing around the zone, but just not able to hit the strike zone for Steve Gould back there behind the dish. 3-1. Coleman. Hits it over to Evans, who ends the inning, but... A ...uniform this year. Kenny Gajewski has not been shy about his disappointment in Maxwell transitioning to their biggest rival. Rival. I think the pressure of that change was also what went into the beginning of the year and the struggles that she's had settling in. In back into the circle, wearing a different uniform. Yeah, not just transferring, but transferring to your bitterest rival uh, at Oklahoma. Kelly is a native of Texas, three-time first team All Big 12, two-time All-American when she was at Oklahoma State, was the game one winner here, and has come in to relieve Nicole May in this game. When that transfer came after 
John Garfelt, who had been her pitching coach at Oklahoma State, decided to retire and not return to the staff. And with that change, Kelly felt a need to move to a different school, entered the portal, and found her way to Norman, Oklahoma, just down the road. Looks it in the right field. Look out, there was Coleman able to take it with Boone close by. Doherty flies out. It is all about communication out there in the outfield, Pam. And when you've got a center fielder like Jada Coleman, you've got to be able to listen as you track because there, Boone was on it. But the communication from Coleman told Boone to give way. And the center fielder always has priority over a ball that's between the two. Jada Coleman is so good, covers so much ground out there at center. And now Jada Cody coming up here in the fifth inning. One of the oh-so-important seniors on this team. Special relationship with her head coach, Cindy Ball Malone, as well. Hoping this is not her last at bat in her home ballpark. I don't know that the Knights are going to be able to pull off a postseason host opportunity. They are not ranked at the moment. Their RPI does sit at 26, so postseason is definitely in their future. That's off of Maxwell and Hodge, who just came in to play second base. How about that? Off the ricochet, was able to get Cody. I mean, if you could have scripted that any better, I don't know though you I don't know that you could have that ball off the foot of Maxwell will get a trip to the circle by Patty Gasso to make sure that her pitcher's okay, but the ricochet right to the new second baseman Hodge, you've gotta be kidding me. Pretty perfect ricochet to get the out. So Avery Hodge coming in to start this inning, relieving Torres over there at second. Avery is a sophomore from Richmond, Texas. First time we've seen her in this series this weekend. Chloe Evans had a two-run home run in the first inning. It gave the Knights their first lead of the game. It's her second time facing Maxwell. Head coach Cindy Ball Malone had high praise for Chloe Evans when she talked about how the introduction of NIL into the world of softball, players can sometimes get pretty stingy with the things that they get, but when it came to Chloe Evans, she got gear for her whole team. Good teammate, Maxwell, able to zip it over, and Sanders handled the low. Th Felton, pardon me, who started this game, lasted just two innings plus two batters, gave up four runs, comes back in through 60 pitches. And she will start off by facing Alyssa Brito, Pam Ward, and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you on this beautiful day in Orlando. Finale of a three game set in the Big 12 between UCF and Oklahoma. Oklahoma took the first two, including a two to one nail biter yesterday. OU had two total hits. That's it. They had an RBI double by Parker and then the home run by Jennings. Both Parker and Jennings have gone deep today, Parker twice. Oklahoma tying a season high with five home runs. Good start to the six for Felton, who struck out Burrito. And that's the exact same pitch that Felton struck Burrito out on their first time around. It was in the first inning that Felton was able to get three strikeouts. She didn't strike out the side. She hit a batter, gave up a walk. But Felton back in the circle, refocused and ready to attack these hitters. Sydney Sanders looking for her first hit today. Actually, her first hit of the weekend. Sooners would love, obviously, to get her going before they go into Bedlam and then postseason. Oklahoma certainly will be hosting a regional, and if they win a super regional again, try and get to get back to the World Series. They've been to seven straight, and they've won three in a row. Yeah, 
you look at the dominance of Oklahoma, five of the last seven Women's College World Series titles have gone to Oklahoma. 16 Women College World Series appearances, 23 Big 12 titles. Will they be able to pull off number 24 before they move over and join the SEC next season? You have to watch Bedlam and then the Big 12 tournament to find out. It's a walk for Sanders, fourth one given up overall by Felton. And there you see the four losses. To Got the loss for their first home loss. Boone flew out for the second out of the inning. Maya Bland is pinch running over at first for Brito. And now Hodge comes in. She came in to play second base in the last half inning, made a nice play in the field. And now she hits for the first time today. That's the hard ground I was talking about earlier, Pam. When you've got corners that are crowding you, you've got to use that hard ground in front of home plate to get that high hop. Knowing that this dirt bakes in the Florida sun, it's going to be hard unless they give it a lot of water. It did not get watered before this game. That hop definitely such an important part of a slapper's game and Hodge takes advantage. So Bland the pinch runner who came in for Sanders now over at Second base. And they turn the lineup over. And it starts to get really scary again. Because here's Parker, who has two home runs today. Chops it. Playable. And thrown out. Go back to the Olympics. Not in this current one, but in the next cycle. Going to be coming back into the Olympics. How many of those Oklahoma players that will be able to hold on for an additional four years, many of them graduating this year or already graduated like Alo a couple of years ago? There's Aubrey Evans to start things off. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Oklahoma 11 runs on 11 hits, including five home runs. The Knights with five runs on seven hits and have committed one error. Coleman goes back and couldn't get to it. It hit off the top of the padding and stayed in the park. Now it is after the sixth inning and the umpires can take this to review themselves if they would like, but this ball off the top of the wall. So it looks as though it has to go over the whole black piece of the center field wall. If it had not been extended higher, those additional couple of feet, that ball would have been out of here. It would have been a leadoff home run, but it stays in the park and Aubrey Evans sits at second base, putting herself in scoring position. Leadoff double for Evans. And now a play not handled by Hodge. And the Knights have the first two runners on here in the sixth. Remember, Hodge entered last inning, got that ricochet out at first base, but this ball eats her up, up the middle. It's hard sometimes to play deep and give the ball an extra chance to get the hop. Willis takes advantage, and now runners on the corners for the Knights, putting pressure on the Sooners. Samantha Del Hoyo in. To hit for the first time, came into pinch run and stayed in to play left field. Check that, it's Kennedy Searcy. 
pardon me, who pinch hit for Rowe and has stayed in the game. Struck out her last time up facing Maxwell. This time she pops up for the first out of the inning. Sierra Humphreys has a hit today, trying to get some more runs home. Oklahoma has the most runs they've given up this year, nine runs and a loss to Louisiana. Five runs today. The third most they've given up in any game this season. Nice stop again by Hansen behind the plate. Actually, it was a nice stop behind the plate by Ludlam, who has come in to catch. When you think about how many years Kinsey Hansen has been behind the plate for Oklahoma, you have to give way to additional players to get time behind in their position because next season, Hansen's not an option. Ludlam will need to be that everyday starter for them. So it gets her some experience and gets some rest for Hansen, who missed some time earlier this year with a bum knee. Two-two pitch to Humphreys is inside and called a strike. And that's the hard part about a lefty in the circle that throws that nice curveball. It comes in on the hands of a right-handed hitter. So as it starts on the outside part of the plate, you think you need to let it travel. But then as it continues to spin and move, it gets in on your hands and it jams up a lot of righties. Hanson over there in the dugout with a towel over her head. Hydrating. It's what you told Patty Gasso to do in wearing all black. It's important. <laughs> well, and Kinsey Hansen has been so good in the postseason that she is definitely necessary. You gotta keep her healthy, but also give Ludlam opportunities behind the dish. Jennings goes over to second to get One out, but another run crosses the plate as Evans comes in with the sixth run of the game. Well, Pam, that is such a hard play for a shortstop to make as they aggressively come forward and get that play or get that ball off the hop. I love the aggression, though, to pick her hop and not let it eat her up. Terry Jennings has been so good up the middle for Oklahoma. First pitch swing. Results in the final out of the inning, but another one crosses the plate. And T.R.A. Jennings hit a home run her last time up, but this time, first pitch lands in the glove of Evans. So Jennings just two hits on the weekend, both of them solo home runs. So only two RBI for Jennings. Disappointing weekend. I know, especially you, Pam. You, 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 you relish. As she's pursuing your record for the most home, uh, most RBIs in the history of the game. And I, I, I like the look watching good softball players. You like the look on my face when she gets another RBI and I look <laughs> a little more defeated. I, but I cheer her on. I yes. don't want anybody to think that I am wishing anything ill because she has been one of my favorite players to watch in her career. And it's a record that has stood for since the dinosaurs, yes. I think, walked the earth, a while. right? It's been a while. <laughs> the last century. Here's Cassidy Pickering, who had a home run. One of the five. 
Oklahoma looking for yet another series sweep. Texas is the only Big 12 series they have lost this year. As the Longhorns took two out of three, but Oklahoma has gone by Texas in the Big 12 standings. Yeah, up by half a game. Bedlam will be incredible next weekend. Big series for both the Sooners and Oklahoma State. And so Oklahoma and Texas, they sit just half a game apart. Oklahoma has Oklahoma State next weekend. Texas facing off against Texas Tech in the final series of the regular season. Pickering draws the walk. I'll tell you what, Pickering has such a good eye. After striking out in her first plate appearance today, she's got three walks and a home run. So Ludlam who came in to replace Hansen behind the plate at catcher will now bat in Hansen's spot, the number four spot in the order. Well, Ludlin seemed significant time this season. She caught when Hansen was out during the season with some of those issues with her knees. She was a leader at Furman. And with two catcher transfers over the offseason that went into the portal, Coach Gasso went in to find one of her own and was able to do so by grabbing up the transfer from Furman this season. And now Hannah Kaur comes in to pinch run, and it was funny when Coach was talking, she actually called Riley Ludlam, who had a brilliant career at Fordham, and said she had to call her back because Ludlam didn't believe that Patty Gasso was actually calling her to inquire about her coming over to OU. Yeah, so Gasso had to call her back to prove that it really was her. And while, while you won't see Ludlam back for the Sooners next year because she is in her final season of playing, it's important to have her healthy and ready to go because with Kinsey Hansen behind the plate, you need to have a backup. And look at the way that Ludlam from Furman was able to step in with so much success already and to be able to be a quiet presence back behind the dish for the Sooner pitchers. Well, it's just so valuable. That sails high, a wild pitch, the third of the game for Felton. And that sends Core down to second base. But Coach Gasso talked about how the Fort Myers, Florida native Ludlam has been such a bright spot for them. Last year, the Southern Conference Player of the Year, she had 372. And she says she loves Ludlam's, says she loves softball. She's just a smiley kid, just having the time of her life this year playing for Oklahoma, something that I'm sure she never expected. No, and she's called her a kid in a candy store, just takes the field every day smiling. They're probably not smiling too much, though, with that strikeout. Fifth strikeout of the game for Felton. Jada Coleman comes up. They found a successful squeeze bunt earlier in this game. Right up the middle, but nice play by Felton to grab it and end the inning, that strands, strands core. And then and Ch field goal. Chicago was the winner on Friday, 7-1. So here we go for UCF. Lajan, we've seen her in the circle this weekend. She hit a two-run home run back in the second inning. But UCF, only the second time they have faced Oklahoma. They were in the 2022 Super Regional. They got swept in that one, and they're three outs away from getting swept in this, the one and only regular season Big 12 series they will play against the Sooners. First year for UCF in the Big 12, last year for Oklahoma in the Big 12. Skied, Hodge has the sunglasses on, and one away in the seventh. UCF will go to Iowa State to conclude their regular season next weekend. Well, and I believe they've put together a resume that will give them an opportunity to play in the postseason. It's not been a year that will give them the opportunity to host 
but I fully anticipate seeing their name called on Selection Sunday, but they will travel. What a luxury for Patty Gasso, Nicole May, Kelly Maxwell, and then you have Deal, who, as you mentioned, not a lot of work last year, but certainly coming on strong here in her sophomore season. When Patty Gasso knows she's going to have to get Kirsten Deal ready to go, I mean, what a great pitcher name, right? Kirsten Deal, to be able to step in and be that workhorse for them next year as they lose Maxwell in May to graduation. Lifted it in the left center field, and that is gone. Shannon Doherty with the home run. Well, and for a pitcher yesterday to have only given up two hits, today, within the first three pitches, gives up a bomb? Are you kidding me? Look at UCF not giving up to be able to step in and take advantage of a pitch left big, a pitcher trying to fill the zone as she toes the circle. That right there, huge swing. Got to love the celebration at home plate. This, this team is looking to make noise in the postseason. I would not want to see UCF come into my home and in regionals and have to play against them, but it is a senior day for her. So the home run for Doherty, and then the base hit for Cody, another senior, most likely playing her final game at UCF on this field. It sounds weird, but that's the kind of memory you want to have in your last at bat on your home field. You, you're able to sit back and say, you know what, my last at bat, I was successful. Carry that into the postseason, try to give your team a deep run. Louie Evans hit a two run home run in her first at bat this afternoon against starter Nicole May. Coach Ball Malone talked about how much she enjoys being around this team. You mentioned it, they they fight, they don't give up. She's got 11 seniors, and we've seen them do some damage here this afternoon. But if you look back into Chloe Evans' first at bat, it was off Nicole May, and she put a huge charge, and it stayed inside the foul pole. And that's what put the Knights up 2-0 in the first inning. Game was tied up by Oklahoma. Then UCF went up 4-2 on Halajan's second inning home run. And a chance here. Nope. It is bobbled as Hodge tried to get it over to Jennings. And Everybody's safe. That's a miscue that definitely needs to be shored up. It's a quick transfer, knowing that there's an opportunity for a double play. But as Jennings is approaching second base, she's waiting for that throw, and it comes back inside. And Jennings can't catch that throw on the inside part of the bag because that's where the runner's coming in. So as a second base or as a shortstop coming across, you've got to go to the outside part of the bag. Hodge needs to give that dish to the back side of second base, not the inside of second base for that one to be successful. It's a second error on Hodge since she came in to relieve Torres at second base. Sanders with a little bit of a snow cone, but makes the catch at first. And this Oklahoma team has always had great defense, but in this series, we've seen quite a few miscues. In game one of this series, Oklahoma had three errors. Yesterday, they had a single error. Today, two more errors. So a ton of errors in this series here at the end of the year. It's 11 in their last nine games, still the best fielding percentage in the country. Sarah Willis swinging for the fences. Well, 
Willis, a senior on this team. Second year here after a couple of years at the University of Washington. She threw the first seven inning perfect game in UCF history last season. And pitched so well yesterday, just giving up two hits, but unfortunately for her, one was a home run and the other an RBI double. And they lost two to one. The two hits, a season low for Oklahoma. And now the OU fans are on their feet. They're one strike away. And they get it as Willis went up high and struck out to end the game, Oklahoma with five home runs wins it 11 to seven. Their sixth conference sweep of the season. And they take.